launch. Hello. Do you know where I am? I'm at the fire station. And this is the fireman's pole. And this is Louise. Hello. I'm visiting the fire station with Ken. I expect if we wait around, we'll see the fireman go out to a real fire. But just now, it's quiet and a good time to look around. Right. Shall we start with the fire engines? Right. They're huge, aren't they? The firemen keep them spotlessly clean. Especially the bell. These are the long ladders that they use for rescuing people from tall buildings. And in here are all the hoses and equipment for fighting a fire. But what they need most for fighting a fire is water, lots and lots of it. So when they get to a big fire, this is what they look for. I expect you've seen one of these before. It's a plate that shows where the fire hydrant is. And these two figures tell the fireman all he needs to know. This four means there's an underground water pipe four inches wide. And the nine means that the pipe is nine feet away. Let's try it and see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, this looks like it. And John here is going to open it up for us and test it. Hello, John. fire hydrants is one of the things that firemen do when they're not actually fighting fires. And back at the station, they practice using their fire equipment. Fast, they tell, come up! But it's not all work. They're playing billiards now while they wait for the bell to ring. As soon as they hear the bell, they need to get downstairs to the engines as quickly as possible. So they dash over to the pole. Wrap their legs round and slide to the ground. And over here are their boots with the waterproof trousers already attached. And in here are the helmets. These black helmets are for the ordinary fireman and the white ones for the officer. That's so he can be easily picked out, even in the thickest smoke. This one belongs to today's officer, Mike Keenan. He's usually too busy to join in at the billiard table as he has the fire station to run. Hello? Yeah, officer to watch. I've got a compass. But like everyone else, if the fire bell goes, he has to leave what he's doing and race off to the fire engine. Um, I've had to send a bloke home because he... I've got to go, I've got a fire call. And there it goes. Anything, Salvador? Anything, Salvador? Tagama! Fire. Waterloo Road. save time, they finish dressing on the way to the fire. Now 
usually they reach the fire within minutes of the alarm being raised. Now what they need is water. Do you remember what they look for first? Yes, the sign which tells them where the fire hydrant is. Is there anybody in there? I've got two of my blokes missing. Saving lives comes first, and these huge escape ladders are specially built for rescuing people from tall buildings in a hurry. Get in the left hand door at the top there. in the ground floor and a jet in the first floor. Can you see how he's carrying him? It's called the fireman's lift because it leaves one hand free to open doors or climb ladders. Gonna walk you down the ladder now, all right? smoke gets very thick inside the building, the men may need to put on special equipment. The big bottles on their backs carry supplies of air so they can breathe properly. No more BA, mate! No wider. That's how today's firemen deal with a blaze. Makes it difficult to imagine that uh, once a fire nearly burned the whole of London to the ground. Not the London we know today, of course, with its tall concrete buildings, wide roads and great bridges spanning the Thames. No, this was over 300 years ago. And then London was a much smaller place with only one bridge crossing the river. The city was a jumble of narrow streets crowded with horse-drawn coaches, tradesmen's carts and jostling people. Even the clothes were different then. The men wore stockings and breeches and long frock coats like these. While the women wore long heavy dresses with white collars and their hair in curls. As for the houses, they were made mostly of wood. And as they were often hundreds of years old, they were as dry as a bone. Inside, they had open fires with no fire guard to protect them. The timbers and the roofs were often covered with tar. That meant that if they once caught fire, the whole building would burn, and burn fast. Down by the river, things were worse still. The warehouses were stacked high with barrels of spirits, oils, candle wax, and outside on the docks were great piles of hay, timber and coal, all the things that are most inflammable, that's the things that burn most easily. The streets themselves were very narrow, so narrow in fact that you could shake hands across them. That meant 
But once the fire had started, it would soon spread. What's more, anyone trying to fight the fire in these crowded, narrow streets had very little chance to move freely. And then there was the biggest problem of all. In 1666, there was no fire brigade, so there was no one whose job it was to put the fires out. Sooner or later, there was bound to be a really bad fire. And in 1666, it happened. The Great Fire of London broke out. It all began one night in a baker's shop in a street called Pudding Lane. It was just before midnight, and the baker had put his sticks for the next day's fire by his oven and gone to bed. But while he was asleep, the sticks caught fire. Smoke began to appear at the door, and within minutes, first the house and then the whole street were ablaze. Most people didn't even notice the fire, and those that did thought it of little importance and went back to bed. But fanned by the wind, the blaze spread down to the docks. Here, it found all the fuel it needed. As dawn broke over the city, London Bridge itself was burning. Every hour, the fire seemed to pick up speed as it swept from street to street, throwing up a pillar of smoke that was visible for miles around. Well, no one felt quite so safe now. All over town, people grabbed their belongings and ran. Come on! What? Don't just stand there. Oh, yes, right, Give me a yeah. hand. Right. Oh, well, don't forget Father's picture. Most people were happy just to save themselves, but some did try to fight the fire. But they didn't have much to fight it with, just leather buckets to carry water from hand to hand and throw it on the flames. And great hooks to pull down the houses as they caught fire. They hoped that this would stop the blaze spreading to other buildings. Some had fire squirts like these. They worked a bit like a bicycle pump, but they could suck up a lot more water and throw it a lot further than a man with a bucket. But biggest and best was this simple fire engine. It could be wheeled right to the blaze and throw a long jet of water with its hand pump. But at the time of the Great Fire, only a handful of them had been built. raged out of control for three days and nights and it destroyed over three quarters of the old city. And that's the story of the Great Fire. It was a terrible experience for the people of London, but when it was all over, they set to and built themselves a new city. And they also set to and made up a song about the fire. It's a song that children have always enjoyed singing and it's a song that you've just heard in the program. It's time for us to be going now, but we're going to hear the song once more, and this time you can all join in. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>